Good afternoon. We continue with our uh, lecture on Michael Ondate's The English Patient. So, um, today in today's lecture, we are going to see the highlights of uh, 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 the talk today. So, one is love and loss. Okay, so, these are the key concepts that we will be discussing um, in today's class. Love and loss in uh, the English patient. So, the theme of uh, what it means to uh, love, to befriend someone, to care for somebody and to lose that person. So, the idea of love and loss, but it is not just the person that we are talking about here. It is also our own identities, also, uh, uh, our countries. Okay, our own selves that we are talking about. So, loving and losing self, our nations and people whom we have known once and cared for once, but uh, which all got uh, you know eroded or got lost on the way. Identities, we have been talking about the theme of identity in, in, the, in the English patient for quite a while and identities is actually the most important theme of uh, the English patient, because all the characters, whether you remember the characters, all the characters, the principal um, characters of the English patient, whether it is Kip or uh, Almezi, Count Almezi, who is our hero, the English patient or Hannah. Okay, the major characters, they are the people who are in search of their identities, whose identities are extremely fluid. They belong to, they belong everywhere and nowhere. That is the issue. Catherine and her husband. Okay, uh, <coughs> they are English and somehow they cannot cope with uh, the world outside and therefore, they are the first to perish away. Assimilation, what it means to get assimilated in a troubled world, in with uh, in a world where there are nationalities, uh, languages, races of such diversity that we cannot even start counting. So, what does it mean to assimilate with people? whom we have uh, never encountered before. As the English patient, as uh, Count L. Massey, he does so effortlessly. Of course, you know we have another major character when we talk about the English patient and that, that is <coughs> Caravaggio, one of the most uh, charismatic characters from the novel, the former thief, the master thief, who is uh, uh, an expert in stealing secrets and stealing uh, materials during the second world war from people. Uh, Count Almezi, uh, if you remember, he is uh, he's a geologist, he is an expert in map making, a cartographer. Okay. So, these are the people that we talk about and their identities um, form the theme, the basic core of uh, the basic theme of the English patient. Journey, almost every character in the English patient takes a journey or makes a journey. So, whether it is Kip and Kip is a Sikh from uh, Punjab in India, he goes to first to Scotland, England, uh, he learns the art of uh, uh, diffusing bombs during the second world war. He is a young man and during the course of the second world war, he travels across uh, Europe, he travels across continents and ends up at uh, the villa where the other, the other characters are residing. So, if you, how many of you remember the name of uh, the villa where uh, all these characters assemble? Villa San Giralamo. Okay, it's in Italy, Tuscany, Italy. Okay, so the, we are talking about journey. So Kip takes a journey from India to San Giralamo. Count Almezi, he belongs to everywhere and nowhere. He is the original rootless man and he starts, uh, uh, well his identity that is the, uh, that forms the basic theme of uh, the English patient. So, who is he? He is definitely not an Englishman. So, the English patient is not English. 
Okay, Hannah. Hannah, she is a Canadian nurse, and she starts from Canada, ends up in Europe, and now she is in Italy at uh, Villa San Girolamo. Okay. Caravaggio. Caravaggio is an international thief, a spy, um, and a person who can, you know, make or break his way into any anybody's house, anybody's. Uh, uh, he can break lockers, he can steal documents, secrets, etc. And he too, but while he, um, during the Second World War, he has been captured by the enemies, and as a punishment, they cut off both his thumbs. So he is the thumbless man. Okay, and uh, after losing, having lost his thumbs, now he cannot do what he is best at. That is stealing. That is his. You know, uh, that's his craft. So he has been punished in such a way that he cannot practice his craft anymore. So Caravaggio. Okay, so interesting characters, all of them, and of course, then the body. The body as a theme. I mean, you look at everybody's body. Its body is something that Ondate is extremely interested in. So the English patient's body. What Count Almazi looks like before. He is burnt. You remember this story? Okay, he falls in love with Catherine, okay, who is Geoffrey Clifton's wife. They are newlyweds. They have just arrived from England uh, into this desert where the war is in full force. Um, but uh, as fate would have it, Catherine falls in love with uh, Count Almazi. And uh, uh, that leads subsequently to the you know the catastrophe, the tragedy of the of the uh, of these people. So while escaping with Catherine uh, in a in an old rotten aircraft, there is an accident, and uh, Catherine of course dies, and Count Elmesi he is left almost charred. Okay, he's uh, he's just breathing. He's not. Uh, uh, there is nothing to else left to him. So, he, his body is completely charred, he is absolutely burnt. And Hannah, uh, the nurse, she nurses him, she takes care of him. He has traveled in his uh, burnt condition. The Bedouin of the Bedouin, of the, that it is a tribe, they take care of him, they uh, uh, move around with him, uh, they take him places, they treat him um, with respect for quite a while because they are impressed with his. Uh, Encyclopedic knowledge of deserts and uh, um, uh, artillery and weapons of all kinds. But once uh, um, his uh, utility is finished for them, they just uh, abandon him. And that is how he travels to San Girolamo, the villa where he finds Hannah. Okay, so, in the English, patient's body is uh, an extremely vital site. For whatever happens in the uh, in the novel, okay. Hannah, Hannah is also she she is a beautiful girl. She is extremely young, but then she goes to extreme measures to uh, make herself look ordinary, to make herself look plain. So she dresses uh, in an extremely unattractive way. She chops off her hair um, once very long, lustrous and beautiful, but she does not want them and because she has seen so much of death, so much of ugliness and she feels that she has no right to remain pretty in a world which has gone so completely uh, ugly. Okay. So, her it is her body and she is often compared to uh, her thin, she is extremely thin, she does not take care of herself, um, uh, you know she wears men's shoes and walks around the villa. Uh, digging the earth and gardening and cultivating, it, she does everything with her hands. So her hands have calluses now. She, her, she has cut her hair extremely short, almost like a boy's, and because of uh, um, uh, you know, uh, as a way of the way she punishes herself by hard work and by not taking care of her um, of herself, she uh, she almost you know loses weight and she looks like a stick. She is compared to a young boy. She her body looks like. Um, that of a young boys. Okay, Caravaggio, his thumbs, the chopping of his thumbs. Okay, so again a violation of his body. When we were uh, talking about the novel last time, we also talked how important the idea of books, you know, books as a metaphor.
is implicit in the English patient. So, the, re, if, uh, the art of reading, the act of reading, it recurs throughout the novel in various forms and capacities. So, Hannah in the beginning itself tries to connect with Elmeri, who is almost dead. He, you remember he is charred, he is totally burnt, uh, he loses all his hair, there is nothing left to him. So, she, Hannah just to, in order to keep him alive, she reads out, she reads aloud to him you know almost the way a mother would do to a baby ok. So, so to, uh, and she does it, so because she knows how much he loves reading, uh, how do we know that? Because the only thing he could manage to save in that aircraft, an air crash was his copy of histories by Hero Dutus. You remember the things which were happening in the copy of his, his copy is all worn out, old ok, but still he is extremely attached to his book. Okay, so, he always keeps the oh, uh, histories by Herodotus, that is the name of the book. Okay. So, this is a thing, uh, this is a book uh, that, that, is, that is extremely dear to him, he cherishes it and whatever important has happened in his life, he has made notes uh, uh, in the copy of this book. So, this is a this is a possession that he does not want to let go of and uh, uh, Hannah knows uh, that how much he loves reading, how much he loves books, but he is unable to do that himself because he cannot even lift his hands, he is so badly damaged. So, she spends long time nursing him and reading aloud to him. Viras and Giralamo is a huge place, okay, a damaged yet a fascinating place to live in and it has uh, um, it is uh, you know uh, a vast library with an immense collection of books. So, Hannah keeps reading uh, or uh, taking books from that collection and reading out aloud to him, reading aloud to him. So, I will read you uh, the passage you know uh, which is given right at the beginning of the novel. I am on page 12, um, she opened the book, the pages were joined together in a stiff wave. She felt like Crusoe. So, uh, who was Crusoe? Robin, the reference is to um, Robinson Crusoe, the, the iconic adventurer, man fried, the man who got marooned on an island um, while sailing and he spent several years on that island along with uh, one faithful companion, man fried. Okay, so, she felt like Crusoe finding a drowned book that had washed up and dried itself on the shore. In the title of the book is a narrative of 1757. What happened in 1757? American War of Independence. Okay, so uh, she reads um, that book aloud to him, illustrated by N. C. Wyeth. As in all of uh, the best books, there was the important page with the list of illustrations, a line of text for each of them. Michael Ondaatte clearly loves books and book readings and he lovingly in great details describes the features of the books that his characters read. So, at one at this uh, uh, at one point he tells us that how beautifully the book is illustrated, a book that uh, details the American war of independence and it has all the uh, it, it comes with the pictures it has and the pictures come with captions and uh, uh, small uh, textual uh, quotations and everything is uh, you know lovingly described by Michael Ondaatte. So, as in all of the best books, there was the important page with the list of illustrations, a line of text for each of them. So, each book, each uh, photograph has been described. She entered the story knowing she would emerge from it, feeling she had been immersed in the lives of others in plots that is stretched back 20 years her body full of sentences and moments, as if awaking from sleep with a heaviness caused by unremembered dreams. So, book reading now is compared to an act of adventure, ok. You almost feel like, uh, you know, almost feel akin with uh, an adventurer like uh, Robinson Crusoe and uh, she feels as if she is drowning in the world of that book. So, both Almazi and Hannah, they are the such devoted readers of 
um, books, but it is not just these two characters, Catherine as well. Catherine reads voraciously too and that is one of the reasons, um, and one, one of the uh, you know first uh, initial reason for attraction between Catherine and Almazi, because she reads voraciously and we are also told that um, when uh, Almazi falls in love with her, it is because it is when um, when she reads aloud a poem, when she recites a poem and that is the that is the point when he says that he the voice was so haunting and beautiful um, uh, that he could not take it anymore, he just walks away and that is the point where he fell in love with uh, a voice. Okay. So, in each of these instances of reading the characters use books to reflect, reflect or illustrate their own lives and to connect to some another place or time. So, books are not just books, books exist because they also um, act as a metaphor for the lives of these characters and the characters can relate to, uh, to whatever is happening to them okay, um, through the plots and actions and characters uh, which are there, which are present in these um, books. Okay. It is also Catherine's reading of the story from Herodotus. She reads the story of Jaijis, where the emperor invites um, his friend uh, to um, witness his uh, uh, wife, the queen's beauty in its uh, naked glory. And when that happens, the queen is so angry that she orders the friend to. Um, you know murder her husband so this is this is something that happens parallel in the, to the story to our story as well so michael on that they very cleverly um, weave such narratives in his story in in the english patient which have a direct bearing on the plot of his novel okay books are also used to pass on secrets and codes during the, uh, the during the war remember this is the time when the second world war is in progress and um, there is a german spy who has memorized the entire text of uh, Daphne du Maurier's rebecca okay, rebecca if you remember last night i dreamt i went to mendeley again famously begins with uh, this sentence so um, rebecca is used as a code Okay, to uh, transfer messages during the war. Okay. So, um, it is through you know such kind of interactions that uh, we get to understand that how multidimensional all the characters in the English patient are. At this point, I would like to give you one assignment. See, the English patient makes references to a host of books. Okay, so, what I want you to do is um, pick any two uh, works of literature, perhaps you can look at uh, Robinson Crusoe or you can also look at uh, Rudyard Kipling's Kim, which is so often mentioned and referred to in the book. So, perhaps you can look at uh, su some you know such examples and see how these, how the uh, lives of the characters in the English patient, they reflect what is happening in the plot of these uh, novels that uh, um, Ondate refers to. I will give you some of the uh, some of the examples that are referred to here. One is Herodotus's histories of course, then Robinson Crusoe, you also have Shakespeare's The Tempest and Stendhal's Parma, Mo uh, Herman Melville's Pierre and James Fenimore Cooper's The Last of the Mohicans. Leo Tolstoy's Anna Karenina and uh, Daphne du Maurier's uh, Rebecca and of course, Rudyard Kipling's Kim. So, you should also I mean pay attention uh, to the mention to uh, the reference to uh, Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy after all Anna Karenina also is uh, uh, a story of forbidden love. Okay. Um, again, it is a story of uh, adultery and passion okay, between people who are married to different people, you know the heroine is married to someone else and she falls in love with her, with someone and uh, she leaves her husband and child for him and the repercussions uh, and the kind of you know the, the havoc that it brings 
uh, in the lives of uh, uh, the characters. Okay. So, as I was say, uh, telling you, books are an important means of underpinning relationships in the English patient. So, this is an assignment that you should be doing. Okay. Um, turn to page 155 now. Okay, um, yeah. Uh, he lies in his room surrounded by the pale maps. He is without Catherine. His hunger wishes to burn down all social rules, all courtesy. Her life with others no longer interests him. He wants only her stalking beauty, her theatre of expressions. He wants the minute and secret reflection between them, the depth of field minimal their foreignness intimate like two pages of a closed book. Now, when we talk about two pages of a closed book, what are we talking about? Not an open book like this, but closed book. So, the, he wants that kind of intimacy, nothing in between. Okay. Two pages of a closed book, nothing could come closer, right? Um, almost like becoming one and this is the kind of intimacy he seeks with Catherine. He does not want uh, to share her with anyone, least of all her husband, Geoffrey Clifton. Okay. So, books are used in order to convey, uh, you know, uh, deep seated passions to the char of, of, of the characters. Okay. So, books are not just books, people do not just read books to while away time okay, or to for entertainment, but every book or every act of reading has an implicit meaning. Okay, you should read a book called uh, The Implied Reader by Wolfgang Iser. I will write it down. Maybe uh, at this stage it may be uh, too advanced for you, but at a later stage whenever you know you have time and you want to read something more in depth on the act or art of reading. Wolfgang Iser, German writer the implied reader. <clears throat> okay, and then also um, you can look at the way Rudyard Kipling's Kim has been used and it is all it, this is another instance of uh, on that they carefully selecting uh, and referring to a book which has some bearing on the lives of the characters in the novel. So, in as we were talking about in Vi, uh, Villa San Giralamo, we have characters from all nationalities, all parts of the world. We have the Indian Kip, we have the Hungarian, uh, the European El Maggi, we have Caravaggio who belongs to everywhere and nowhere, almost like El Maggi. We have the British Catherine and we have the Canadian Hannah. Okay, Hannah, another rootless person. So, we have Europeans, Asians, we have uh, uh, Canadians, all of them living together, coming together uh, in uh, you know, uh, in some kind of a, uh, uh, an old forgotten villa. Okay. So, it, it, it almost the villa becomes a microcosm of our uh, globalized times or of our world, okay, with uh, people of all races and ethnicities and uh, um, linguistic backgrounds, they come together and try to make a life for themselves. So, in, in other words, the setting becomes a microcosm for the post-war society where races and cultures and languages intermingle and the boundaries, the so-called boundaries, the boundaries which uh, um, our hero Count Almazi knows so well, they dissolve. Okay. So, it is that kind of uh, atmosphere. Okay. Uh, another important uh, uh, reference to what it means to read books is uh, made on uh, page 94, where Count Almazi, he instructs uh, young, young Hannah how to read Rudyard Kipling as she is reading uh, lines from Kim, he instructs her. Read him slowly dear girl, you must read Kipling slowly. Watch carefully where the commas fall, so you can discover the natural pauses. He is a writer who used pen and ink 
He looked up from the page a lot, I believe, stared through his window and listened to birds as most writers who are, al who are alone do. Some do not know the names of birds, though he did. Uh, your eye is too quick and North American. Think about the speed of his pen. What an appalling barnacled old first pra paragraph it is otherwise. Okay, so, um, reading for pleasure, okay, this is perhaps Michael Ondate giving us tips on how to read, okay, when you read literature or maybe it is like Mo Michael Ondate telling us how to read uh, the English patient. Okay. So, read carefully, read slowly, reading is uh, you know a, a kind of an a kind of a spiritual act, a spiritual uh, experience which should elevate you. So, reading has to be done uh, carefully okay, with lot of joy and with lot of attention, pay attention to the commas, to punctuations, to the cadences, the sounds of languages the way sentences are constructed, the way words are chosen, okay. all that uh, constitutes the pleasure of reading. So, reading has to be given respect, okay. it is a lesson for all of us right? that reading should be done carefully okay, and there is no reading uh, which can compete with reading a hard copy of a book. So, that is what he talks about. Okay. So, that was the English patient's first lesson about reading. He did not interrupt again. That is all he had to uh, tell Hannah about the act of reading. If he happened to fall asleep, she would continue, never looking up until she herself was fatigued. If he had missed the last half hour of plot, just one room would be dark in a story. He probably already know, knew. He was familiar with the map of the story. Uh, there was Banaras to the east and Chaliawala in the uh, north of the Punjab. Okay. All this occurred before the sapper entered their lives. Okay. She had turned from the ending of Kim with his delicate and holy sentences and now clean diction and picked up that patient's notebook, the book he had somehow managed to carry with him out of the fire. Which book are we talking about? Histories. The book is played open almost twice its original thickness. Uh, there was thin paper from a Bible, torn out and glued into the text. King David was old and stricken in years, and they covered him with clothes, but he received no heat. Whereupon his servants said, Let there be sought uh, for the king a young virgin, and let her cherish him, and let her lie in, the, in this bosom, that our king may have heat. So, they sought for a fair damsel throughout all the course of Israel and found Abishag, um, uh, Shanamite and the damsel cherished the king and ministered to him, but the king knew her not. Okay. So, perhaps uh, this could be a reference to the story of Hannah and al -Masi. Okay, why not? Because here we are talking about a king who is, who could very well be al -Masi, who needs uh, to be nurtured, to be cared for and the young virgin, the damsel could be Hannah. Okay. So, several stories running parallel to one another okay. and every story okay, uh, having a bearing on our story of the English patient, on the plot of the English patient. And interestingly, uh, when Kip arrives in this setting, he too arrives as if he is a character route, right out of a Rudyard Kipling's fiction. He just arrives one day, one fine day, okay, and with his exotic presence. Uh, so, uh, coming back to the plot, I mean, we have been talking a lot about uh, the uh, about uh, you know references to books or books as a metaphor in the English patient. So, um, the English patient, as he uh, lay there, uh, you know, almost waiting for his uh, for his end, for for his death. In, uh, in the villa, there is a tender love story, maybe not exactly a you know, kind of, of love as we understand it, you know, pop in its popular connotations, but there is, a, we are, there is some kind of an affection that is a kind of a bond that is starts developing between Hannah 
and uh, the English patient. Okay, and both nurture each other, both uh, in a way add to each other's lives. Hannah, who is totally uh, weather beaten, she is emotionally beaten. She is in a, she is almost on the edge of collapsing. She has seen too much of death and, and uh, too much of tragedies, uh, not just during the war, deaths happening or tragedies happening to other people, to the soldiers who she nurses, but personally also she loses her father, she loses her unborn child, she loses her fiancé and she has seen, she has lived through too much of uh, pain and losses. And somehow the English patient's saintly presence and gives her a, you know, a reason to live, a reason to go on in a world gone awry. So, she feels that uh, um, uh, before uh, the English patient arrived in her life, she felt that there was no need for her to go on. Okay, she had cut off her hair, it was almost like she is turning into something, someone else. She, uh, she, ha she had learned to repress all her needs. Um, just her whole, her, the, her entire being was devoted to taking care of the wounded soldiers. She, if you remember, she had given away all her possessions except her shoes, except a pair of shoes which she likes too much, too much the tennis shoes. And uh, she has taken to calling ev all the soldiers, or everybody who enters her life, buddy. Okay, but that's how she treats life, you know, with a sense of detachment. Yeah, but when the English patient arrives on the scene, she feels that there is a reason um, to uh, live. Okay, so in, uh, for after a long time, she feels a purity of love inside her. So, she refuses to move out when other hospital staff and other doctors and nurses start leaving uh, the villa and going to you know safer places because the war was coming to an end. But she does not want to, she wants to stay back and care um, for the English patient. I will read you out those lines where Caravaggio, her old friend, actually he is her, uh, her father's, her late father's friend and he urges her to uh, give up uh, the English patient. He says that you do not know what you are getting into, you are becoming too emotionally involved with this person, you do not even know much about and this is how it goes. Why do you adore him so much? That is Caravaggio asking. Mm, I love him. You do not love him, you adore him. You know, there is a difference between loving and adoring. Adoring borders on worship. So, uh, Caravaggio is just intrigued. Wh why do you, what do you see in this burnt body? Uh, you have tied yourself to a corpse for some reason. He is a saint, I think. So, for him, for sorry, for Hannah, uh, the English patient, the burnt man is a saint, uh, someone to be worshipped, a despairing saint. Are there such things? Our desire is to protect them. He does not even care. I can love him. A 20 year old who throws herself out of the world to love a ghost, Caravaggio uh, is disbelieving. Uh, how is it possible? You are so young and uh, why are you throwing away your chances? Caravaggio paused, you have to protect yourself from sadness. Sadness is very close to hate. So, this is Caravaggio's philosophy, very profound. Let me tell you this, uh, this is the thing I learned. If you take in someone else's poison thinking you can cure them by sharing it, you will instead store it within you. Those men in the desert were smarter than you. They assumed he would be useful, so they saved him. But when, when he was no longer useful, they left him, leave me alone. So, that is all she has got to say to Caravaggio, leave her alone. I mean, she is in love with the English patient, not in the conventional sort of uh, way, the way uh, the word is generally understood, but uh, she almost has uh, a kind of feels a divine bonding between herself and the dying man and she does not want to leave um, till he dies. Okay. So, the foursome at the Italian villa, uh, Kip, Caravaggio, Hannah and the English patient, they try to figure one, uh, two, they try to figure each other out. Okay. But uh, again, 
you know that is the beauty of the English patient, you know they live in a fragmented villa. Remember it is the it is a kind of place which has been bombed so heavily. So, uh, at some places the ceilings are missing, at some places even walls are missing. You get walk into a room and you can look at the valley outside and it is full of furniture where which, um, which is incomplete because parts of the furniture are missing. The books, okay, the books itself uh, themselves are so fragmented, okay, there are pages and pages missing. So, lots of gaps and indeterminacies throughout in everything in, in everything that surrounds them and that is what Michael Ondate tells us that these gaps and indeterminacies and fragmentations are also implicit in the characters that inhabit the villa. Okay. So, the characters mirror uh, the world outside. Okay. They have boundaries, they do not have boundaries, they would like to dissolve boundaries, um, they would like to make their identities more fluid, but is it possible in the world we live in? Okay. Uh, they are incomplete beings, they have their shortcomings and weaknesses okay. and uh, the state of the villa mirrors their state. Villa itself looks like a work in progress or a work in this um, you know disintegration. So, whatever way you want to look at it, okay, it is there. Okay. So, the characters are uh, fragmented, revealed to us through fragments of memory as in we were talking about last time that mem the construct of memory is extremely unreliable. What is memory? And you can have as many definitions of memory as possible, but memory is never reliable. Narrators can never be reliable. Therefore, Michael Ondate gives us so many narrators. All of them look at uh, the uh, same incidents and give us their own unique perspectives. So, that is what life is as uh, it seems as if um, Michael Ondate is trying to tell us. Okay. The memories can be uh, uh, memories can be re reliable to an extent, but they are highly unreliable as well. Moments, important and cherished moments, they can be visited and revisited by different people and sometimes by the same people and you remember some different things. Okay. Characters in the English patient, they are all, they are on a quest throughout okay. and they never find a resolution. So, there is no beginning or end. Okay. So, they are somewhere in the middle of Europe and their lives are also told to us somewhere in the middle. I mean, we never know uh, how it all began for El Messi. Who was he? He is a Hungarian of course, but uh, we are not told his entire life story, right? We are not told Hannah's entire life story. We are not told Kip's life story or Caravaggio's either. Okay. So, all stories begin uh, somewhere in the middle and without a warning. Okay. Sometimes they do not even end. So, that is the structure of the novel and that is this and uh, that is what Ondate is trying to tell us that that is what life actually is. The crumbling villa in a way also resembles the garden of Eden where everything uh, is innocent. So, innocence and loss of innocence you know is another theme which is extremely predominant in the English patient. So, uh, at the same time the, uh, the crumbling structure, uh, the bombed structure of the villa, it, uh, it also symbolizes modern, uh, modernity's destructive influence on peoples and places and nature. Okay. But at the same time when these very uh, disparate characters, they come together on that it seems to suggest that even in this crazy world, even in this highly destructive world, there can be some hope uh, through faith and love and a desire to assimilate. I mean it is never completely possible to assimilate with uh, people who do not belong to our culture. It is not possible to uh, completely integrate, to get completely integrated with them, but then there we can always try. 
okay and coming together this coming together of four different kinds of people from different languages and nations and cultures and identities and social background that somehow gives us an impression that this is what um, the world should be but um, let's come to kip's character we haven't been we have been talking a lot about catherine and hannah and el messi but uh, um, let's talk a little about kip also now kip is a sikh from the punjab in india and as i just told you that uh, he um, is a soldier he took part in the second world war he is a sapper he is an expert in defusing bombs and uh, he has uh, learned his uh, skill from someone in scotland and taken part in the war and now as the war comes to an end he finds his way in villa, villa san geralamo and um, becomes extremely involved in the lives and loves of these uh, people okay, these uh, canadians and european people but uh, initially he is uh, quite an innocent even after uh, the war but uh, when he realizes how the world and uh, how the war ends and how does how did it end with the bombing of uh, nagasaki and hiroshima in uh, japan okay the allied forces they completely destroyed those two cities and that's when uh, kip realizes that he doesn't really belong to this world he doesn't really belong among uh, this group of uh, western people and uh, this is the I, this is the point where he feels that he should go and um, strive to carve his own identity for himself so, an identity which he was willing to relinquish for a while because he felt so welcomed among these people by hana and caravaggio he even falls in love with hana okay but have this is his way of uh, trying to assimilate with the so called other and hana reciprocate she falls in love with him as well but this is something uh, this is a kind of uh, love which can never be realized and uh, because uh, perhaps uh, on the other is trying to tell us that the cultural differences are so much and so deep that uh, such kinds of relationships are not possible okay so um, uh, uh, after the following the atomic bomb disasters of nagasaki and hiroshima kip decides to leave the villa and reenters indian culture and life and eventually we are told that he settles down um, with a uh, wife with a happy face who laughs permanently and this you can you know this is beautifully juxtaposed uh, with uh, uh, hana who has a serious face an extremely serious face she barely smiles she has forgotten how to laugh and he also ha- cultivates a garden around his house because somehow you know that that idea of uh, um, the original garden garden of eden garden symbolizing innocence and love and happiness is uh, contained here so he lives in his garden she lives somewhere else but uh, the garden whenever he looks out in his uh, garden in india he is always reminded of uh, the gardens that hana culti- cultivated in uh, villa san geralamo okay so after uh, kip's departure uh, so this is also a story when we were talking about the key concepts so love okay hana and kip fall in love but then they soon realize that this is not going to be forever and kip leaves her so um, she, that's what she feels that uh, from now onwards i believe that uh, 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 the personal will forever be at war with the public i'll read you out uh, the these particular lines from they are on page 290 she writes a letter to clara her friend <coughs> this is my first letter in years clara and i am not used to the formality of them I have spent the last few months living with three others and our talk has been slow casual 
I am not used to talking in any way, but that now. The year is 19 for what for a second I forget, but I know the month and the day. One day after we heard the bombs were dropped in Japan. So, it feels like the end of the world. From now on I believe the personal will forever be at war with the public. If we can rationalize this, we can rationalize anything. Okay. So, the, uh, uh, what happens you know the personal becoming a personal uh, becoming one with the political, personal becoming one with the public. So, uh, there, there is no there is no disconnect between the two anymore, they will always impact each other. So, this is the idea. Okay. So, uh, you cannot live a, 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 a highly sanitized life thinking that what is happening around us uh, would not have any deep influence or impact on our lives as long as we are doing well. No, this is not possible. That is what Andartya says that we have to learn to get involved. Otherwise, there will always be wars, there will there would always there will always be tragedies and deaths around us. Okay. So, um, in this connection, uh, I would like to draw your attention to another uh, uh, page, okay, where we were talking about uh, how important the idea of the body is. Tomorrow, I am going to discuss the narrative structure of the English patient, but because today we were talking about the bodies. Okay. So, go to page um, 153 and just see the way bodies are discussed. Okay. It, we are talking about um, Catherine and her lover Count Almasi. A list of wounds, the various colors of the bruise bright rosé leading to brown, the plate she walked <coughs> across the room with, flinging its contents aside and broke across his head, the blood rising up into the straw hair, the fork that entered the back of his shoulder, leaving its bite marks, the doctor suspected were caused by a fox. Okay. So, a lover's fight, a lover's quarrel and Catherine could get extremely violent. And, uh, she once broke a plate on his head and blood trickling down and a, he has a list of wounds. Okay, so, a beautifully constructed sentence, a list of wounds to prove you know, uh, his love for her. Another instance of the body, okay, uh, it is on page 74, sorry uh, page, yeah. Page 74 and her Kip is described. He is the only one of them who has remained in uniform. Immaculate, buckles shine, the sapper appears out of his tent, his turban symmetrically layered, the boots clean and banging into the wood or the stone floors of the house. Uh, on a dime, he turns from a problem he is working on and breaks into laughter. He seems unconsciously in love with his body with his physicalness. Bending over to pick up a slice of bread, his knuckles brushing the grass, even twirling the rifle absent mindedly like a huge maze as he walks along the path of cypresses to meet the other sappers in the village. Okay. So, bodies and what they connote, what they denote okay. is a very important theme in the English patients. So, today's class this was the hi uh, highlight, okay. love and loss, the theme of love and loss in the English patient, identities, nations, races, languages and people of all colors coming together and what a, how identities are impacted, the desire to assimilate okay, and how far is it uh, possible to assimilate ourselves in, our, in this world, journey that people take for whatever reason. And of course, the body as a contested site, the body as a desired site, the body um, as a mark of identity. Okay. So, these are the things that uh, uh, form which are uh, at the core of the English patient. So, we will be continuing with the idea of narrative, how the English patient is, uh, uh, the narrative in the English patient is constructed or you know theorized. And, that is for tomorrow. So, thank you very much.